impact of global poverty is wide and deep, lasting for generations. It feels like time stands still. Mothers, fathers, children, babies and elders, people like you and me, live without clean water, protection against basic illness, and the ability to read and write. And yet we all want the same thing, to be free. Free to be happy and fulfilled. Free to explore ourselves in the world. Free to embrace our gifts and our talents. Free to learn and to dream. For many, school was the first place we learned to dream. Our teachers nurtured us, our lunches nourished us. School helped us carve a pathway for what came next in life. You know that dream of flying? When we feel light and carried by the wind? When we feel like we are powerful and can do anything? When we are free? For some of us, the pathway to learning and to freedom is difficult. It is unpaved, and there are obstacles in the way. But we will build it together, a pathway to transform a child, transform a community, and transform the world. All children, all people everywhere, deserve to be free, to fly. But we remove the barriers, the traditional barriers, the systemic barriers, the deep barriers that have been put in front of people. At the core of our mission is improving the education opportunities of children. I envision a future that will enable every single person, regardless of age, status, or location, to have the opportunity to transform their life. For example, POP builds infrastructure. Infrastructure is very important to create a safe place that won't be impacted by environmental conditions. Television. Football. Football. We have been to schools where the whole school was under a tree, from kindergarten to primary. We may not always realize how important it is to have a safe, sound structure for learning. In an open setting, school can end abruptly. Hey, hello! Hi! I'm going to go to the house. 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 Or how can you learn if it's raining down on you? How can you really focus? Creating a stable environment for them to be able to learn and focus in, I think, is extremely important. It's not just the fiscal structures we see. You move into that classroom, you've seen kids who were sitting on stones now have furniture to sit on. You now have children that have 100 books, books that they could just press a button, flip through with your hands and read. Basic needs of infrastructure, water, books, and there. Seeing all of these kids so happy to know that they don't have to go to school under a tree made me happy and fulfilled this.
It's more than just seeing you dancing, it's expression. The kids said, I'm happy. And no matter where we're from, that's like, that's basically in our DNA, you know, to do that. There's a reliable place where a community sees the symbol of hope and the symbol of aspiration, and they feel no fear of not being able to access this knowledge. Every girl deserves a chance to go to school. But some girls can't go to school every day. Something as simple as getting her period can keep a girl out of school and cause her to fall behind. We have seen some communities that it's taboo for a girl who is menstruating to go to school. That's not something that any woman should experience. It strips us of our dignity. It strips us of our power. The menstrual hygiene program is an integral part of Pencils of Formless Intervention. We teach both boys and girls about the way women's bodies work. We want to educate boys alongside with the girls so that they don't stigmatize the girls. Say hello, I'm Margaret Berry. I'm a wash coordinator at Pencils of Promise Ghana. Hi, I'm Meadow. Lovely to meet you. I've been obviously very inspired by Pencils of Promise and the way you all approach education. Recently, we've introduced uh, making of reusable sanitary pads in our schools because most of them can't afford the disposable pads on their own. And then they already use reusable pads that are not safe. So I want to introduce you to our hygiene club members. Lena, hi. <laughs> Emilia, hi. Frederick, hi. Rabbi, hi. Vida, hi. Laurentia, hi. So we just encourage them to make pass on their own with materials available at home. They're extremely well made. You guys are very talented. So this is the holder and this is the pad. It's very yes. beautiful too, the pattern. We use Ghanaian fabrics for it. With this pad, it didn't stay in our dresses again so that the boys would be laughing at us. Have you been teaching anyone else in your family or if you have younger sisters? Yes. 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 Well, I just I think what you guys are doing is incredible. You are leading this new wave that's gonna help all girls where they're gonna have their menstrual cycle and they won't have to miss school because of you and your efforts. Some of these cultural practices are deep in some of those communities. Advocacy comes in, talking to parent teacher associations, talking to the chiefs to explain to them that yes, the child can still menstruate and still go to school. We are empowered by our bodies. We are proud of who we are. Most of the communities that we've reached out to do not have safe water. We've seen communities with Bihazia, other waterborne diseases that will make children not to come to school. Sometimes we go to these communities and even cry. One of the solutions is to have a water filtration system. So we've been partnering with Vestagard for over six, seven years to provide those live straw uh, water system to schools where they could fetch water from a source and get it floated through the system and drink, which is safe. By providing about four or five of these water filters in the school has helped them a lot. I've seen kids who close from school and fetch water from these filters into bottles to go and drink at home. So we are not even solving a problem in the school alone, but we're even solving a problem back home. What we've realized is that a lot more of the schools that we've built are yet to have these facilities. We have built more than 100 schools, over 187, but currently it's only 98 of them that have access to these water filters. We need a lot more funding to be able to reach out to all the schools that we have built. Mentors of Promise, they gave us good drinking water. 
People throw rubbish into the river. People also watch in the river. When I drink from the river, I feel sick. But now, we have live straw which filters the water before we drink. In Guatemala, there are many communities where they don't have a safe environment to learn. The WASH program, it's focused on providing the students access to the safety bathrooms where they can also attend in classes and not get sick. I've seen a lot of kids, they go to school, but when they need to go to the bathroom, they gotta run home, but they don't come back. The attendance is very important for the kids to learn. COVID has been particularly challenging, as we all have experienced. It has affected every single student. It's affected every single teacher. At the core of our mission is improving the education opportunities of children. And when the pandemic limits our ability to serve them in classrooms, in schools, because they might not be able to gather in that context, it feels like life has been on pause. But when we look at the actual day-to-day -day lives of Pencils of Promise's team members around the world, they're working three times as hard as they ever have before. The way that POP and its leaders have been able to adapt and innovate during this time has been remarkable. Hey, Max and Nono, where were you calling me from? I'm in Germany. I think Max is in Spain. Yes, I'm in Spain. I'm in Seville. I am here in Guatemala, and I am right in front of a special place for you guys. Yes. Yes, yes. Super okay. excited. You probably remember it with a lot of people. As you can tell, it's really quiet and empty. This is due to the pandemic. So it's been almost two years. It's been really hard. They've been missing it a lot. We've implemented different um, strategies for students to be able to obtain all that knowledge and material from their teachers too. I'm really shocked. I had no idea it was closed for over a year and a half now. So it has been a challenge. Hopefully we will be back next year. So that will be very exciting for them because their school is going to be better than ever. Even though it's a little empty out here, we still have some special guests. Max and Nono. Hola. Christian Jocelyn in Guadalupe. She is the school director, school principal. Qué alegre verlos ver y agradecerles al mismo tiempo que por ustedes y su gran travesía hemos logrado estas dos aulas que benefician a los niños de nuestra comunidad. It's a really beautiful moment. Thank you so much. Max and Nono, this is your plaque dedicated to all those who put dreams over comfort. Nono, Maximilian, and the Biking Waters community. I wanna give some time to our wonderful teacher here at School Principal to give us a tour. Sounds great, I can't wait. <laughs> Super excited. Esta es la primera aula. Aquí, pues, atendemos a 35 alumnos. What has changed now you are able to have different rooms for different ages and different classes? Por el de ahí sí que por el edificio la infraestructura que se tiene no se tienen las aulas disponibles y la matrícula escolar aumenta incluso a veces hasta ni maestro tiene que un maestro it's amazing to see what an impact it does now that kids can go to school with kids that are the same age, that have the same level of education. What seems to be small is like such a big change. My class favorite is mathematics. And why is it your favorite class? 
porque me gustan mucho los números. Y mi sueño era ser una doctora. Ah, oh, that's amazing. Well, you have to be good with numbers there, so... I think I can speak for both of us when we say that we wanted to dedicate this school to all those people who put their dreams over their comfort. When I start the pandemic, I'm going to run, to come to the school, to embrace my friends and my friends. I really like the school. The kids who are watching me, Yo extraño la escuela, yo no sé si ellos lo extrañan o no, pero yo sí lo extraño. Ojalá que pronto termine la pandemia. Dreams for us very important for Princess of Promise. It doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't dictate where you're going to end to reach your goal, to reach your dream. <laughs> La pandemia fue algo difícil, fue algo que nos afectó demasiado. Antes de la pandemia, ellos iban a estudiar todos los días, tienen su rutina de, de salir a estudiar de lunes a viernes. No, no se podían ir ni a estudiar, ni salir, nada. Aquí en la casa nos quedamos. Sí va a afectar mucho en la vida del, de los niños, en la, en la vida, en lo del estudio, porque hay, hay cosas que ellos no aprendieron y hay que no, no lograron. En mi, mis sueños con mis hijas es que estudien, que sigan estudiando hasta que se, se gradúen. Y yo voy a estar luchando con ellas. Estoy feliz por las nuevas aulas. Estoy feliz para bailar hoy. The most important part of this is inviting the community members. As a Pencils of Promise, we wanted to make sure that the community also is celebrating something special. I think that some other organizations move in and they are saying we are gifting to this community. We don't see it like a gift to the community. We see it as a partnership between Pencils of Promise and the community. If you don't get that right, your project will not be successful. Whatever project you see, it's a collaboration. 80% of the cost comes from our numerous donors that we appreciate and then 20% from the community. And usually mothers are the ones that turn up. You find 100 women and four men fetching water, carrying sand, mixing concrete. These are not people who have been paid to do this. They believe that they are doing it because of their children. They believe that they are doing it for prosperity. They believe that it is their duty to be able to provide a safe place for their children to study. You have to culture your children, or otherwise they can't get outside of their neighborhood and communicate with people. When we got the offer to go to Ghana, I knew I had to bring my son with me as well. He needed to go to just see how people live, see how these kids were. We need to care about our fellow man, woman, and childhood. Everybody out there, Whatever touches you, give to people, not just at home, but somewhere else in the world. As a mom of a school-aged child, my son was actually very instrumental in me choosing this work. I told him about the work that Pop does, and he's like, Mom, you have to do this. You have to help children. You think children take education for granted, but I think I learned that children do not take education for granted. What we've seen over the years is that the school is still part of the bedrock of the educational experience in many of the communities where we work. And there's something so profound that occurs when that school comes to life. Schools mean everything to a child and the way that they see themselves and the way that they see one another. Through education, through providing access to knowledge, Dreams are born inside of schools. <laughs>